Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Get ready now to file your 2022 federal income tax return. Get ready now. That's quite a demanding tone taken from the IRS here, don't you think? I mean, I'll start my tax preparation when I'm good and ready, dang it. The pro procrastination is like my natural right. I'm sure it's in the Constitution or Bill of Rights somewhere, like the right to procrastination. Possibly both. Like, between free speech and, like, freedom of religion or something. It's gotta be in there somewhere. Although, as we know, free speech has basically vanished these days. But in any case, perhaps procrastination falls under the concept of the pursuit of happiness itself. Because, like, procrastinating and agonizing over having to pay the IRS for as long as possible is clearly a wellspring of happiness. In fact... The pursuit of happiness is what led me to my noble quest to pay as little taxes as possible in the first place, resulting in the joy of not wasting productivity by giving it to people that think we can power the country by mandating everyone wear like a funny hat with a little propeller on top and requiring us to run a mile each day to like make the little propeller spin, which produces precisely enough energy which we don't have the capacity to store to expand on a nice static shock which you will receive next time you touch a doorknob and of course this will result in a law mandating everyone use electronic door openers so as to allow us to store the electronic charge generated from our funny hats with the little propeller on top longer also don't forget to wear a cloth mask to stop the transmission of COVID. And first a joke. To protest global warming, an environmentalist threw soup on and glued his hand to a famous painting in an art gallery of a Las Vegas hotel casino. But why? Beats me. Proclaiming. His hand will remain stuck to the painting until all cows in the entire world are equipped with large carbon capture devices attached to their asses. Our early attempts went through several preparations. Preparations A through G were a complete failure. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we finally have Preparation H. And yes, donkeys should have the same thing attached to their asses as well. <laughs> what? Why don't you just call it Operation Ass Creamy, ass? Even though, like, the entire donkey is technically an ass, we're just talking about, obviously, the ass end of the ass here. Dr. Evil, I love your plan. Yeah, eh? Ah, Air Doctor, it's a really good plan. In any case, at least this guy's got a plan, right? Yes, Frau, on the whole, I think Preparation H feels good. I mean, that's a step up for most of these people. And the best part of this plan is... No one can stop me. <laughs> However, the Las Vegas Hotel Casino called in the pit boss from the casino. Hey, no! 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 I wanted everybody to know that things have changed around here. The hand was left glued to the painting. You dick! And the entire ordeal was a great boon for the hotel casino. Don't kill me! Don't kill me, man! I'm not going to kill you. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about Ticket sales for the art gallery increasing dramatically, while cheating in the casino simultaneously decreased dramatically. He's a monster. And the hand? It's still stuck to the painting. As, sadly, the world's cows have not yet been equipped with large carbon capture devices attached to their asses. We've received a letter from Batman this morning. The Gotham City has earned the rest from crime. But if the forces of evil should rise again to cast a shadow on the heart of the city, call me. I mean, honestly, how did such a coherent plan to solve the global warming problem fail like this? <laughs> Oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. 
IR 2022-203, November 22nd, 2022, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today encouraged taxpayers to take simple steps before the end of the year to make filing their 2022 federal tax return easier. With a little advanced preparation, a preview of tax changes, and convenient online tools, taxpayers can approach the upcoming tax season with confidence. That sounds like a lot of stuff here. A little advanced preparation, a preview of tax changes, and convenient online tools. Note that over the last couple of years, we have had significant changes to uh, the tax code, and people's working conditions have generally changed a lot as well. So the tax code is complex in and of itself, but when we have changes to the tax code, that makes it harder for us to kind of comply with it, given the fact that we're supposed to be paying our taxes as we generate or earn the revenue, either through the withholdings that we tell our employer to do with the help and use of the W-4, or by paying them estimated tax payments in a situation where we have like uh, our own business or gig work uh, or something like that. So if there's inconsistency, we can't really look at the last year to help us to determine what those uh, kind of payments should be made in the following year. So that leads us to need to make more updates in terms of what our estimates are for our estimated payments, either through the withholdings uh, or the estimated payments. So now that it is the end of the year, in order to pay as little taxes as possible, what you would like to do is try to avoid penalties and interest and so you might do kind of like a projection. There's online tools on irs.gov to help you to, to see how much withholdings uh, you're required to have. If you can get those withholdings in or get the payments in place before year end, then it might be a, a, a good thing that could lower penalties and interest for the taxes. Also note that some of these changes to the tax code have been impacting uh, lower income individuals as they change things like refundable tax credits and so tax returns that possibly may have been easy in the past for low income tax returns are actually oftentimes more complex than like middle income tax returns due to the complexities on how these kind of refundable credits work. The, the earned income credit is one of the most complex credits to kind of calculate. The advance, you know, the payments for the child tax credit and the changes to the laws related to it from year to year are confusing. So. Uh, so we want to get an idea of those things. Tax software helps and uh, making sure that we get our payment on time and possibly using the tools from IRS to get a projection of how much our withholdings would be would be a good idea. So filers can visit the Get Ready uh, webpage. There's a link to that here to find guidance on what's new and what to consider when filing a 2022 tax return. They can also find helpful information on organizing tax records and a list of online tools and resources. Get ready by gathering tax records. When filers have all their tax documentation gathered and organized, they're in the best position to file an accurate return and avoid processing or refund delays or receiving IRS letters. Now's a good time for taxpayers to consider financial transactions that occurred in 2022 if they're taxable uh, and, how, and how they should be reported. The IRS encourages taxpayers to develop an electronic or paper record keeping system to store tax related information in one place for easy access. So it used to be you'd get all this stuff, the 1099s, the W-2s and whatnot, and possibly put them into a folder designated for your taxes. But now a lot of times people have the electronic kind of uh, payment or processing systems and companies are trying to go green and whatnot, not to save the world, but because it's cheaper, but possibly we can do both, right? But in any case, uh, so now you're gonna might you might have to get those those documentations from the website or possibly uh, they're gonna email you know a link to it hopefully in a secured fashion and uh, store those documentations. So taxpayers should keep copies of filed tax returns and their supporting documents for at least three years. That's because the statute of limitations is generally three years, meaning the IRS can come back and audit you basically for no reason they could just basically just pick it by random and audit you in the three years if there is like fraud that they suspect they could possibly have a longer time frame from that so you might want to hold on to it for more than three years possibly what you don't want to do is feel like oh look i filed the tax return and because it was accepted because they didn't kick it back because they didn't ask any questions right away i'm good and then that could lead people to to take riskier positions 
And then as time passes, people start to take riskier and riskier positions. That's what kind of happens in fraud cases of all kinds, right? People get comfortable and they start expanding the, the fraudulent acts that they're doing uh, because they feel like they're not being caught. Note that the, that the auditing on the tax code side of things is kind of like a traffic cop auditing speeding, meaning you're not gonna get caught all the time, but when you do get caught, the, the penalty is supposed to be sufficient enough to dissuade you from doing it in the future or the example of the penalty they hit somebody else with should be significant enough that that's the logic kind of behind it in any case before january taxpayers should confirm that their employer bank and other payers have their current mailing address and email address to ensure they receive their year-end financial statements typically year-end forms start arriving by mail or are available online in mid to late january so Usually the, the employers have till until like the end of January to issue the W-2s, the 1099s uh, as well should be going out quickly. But sometimes those 1099s, in my experience, they, they send them out to, to clear the deadline and then they have to adjust it later. So just be aware of the fact of that kind of problem. Taxpayers should carefully review uh, each income statement for accuracy and contact the issuer co to correct information that needs to be updated. So note that if you get documentation that is incorrect, like a 1099, for example, that doesn't have the right box checked off for like a retirement distribution, marking it as a normal distribution or an early distribution, for example, as opposed to a qualified distribution that is not subject to tax for whatever reason, a rollover or something like that. If that happens, then you can't really fix that by going to the IRS because they sent a copy of that to the IRS as well. So if you try to fix it on the IRS side, it's gonna be quite difficult because they got the documentation from the employer. Ideally, you would like to go back to the issuer of the 1099 or the W-2 or whatever, say, hey, you messed it up. You clicked off the wrong box, fix it, send a copy to the IRS. So when I file the tax return, I don't get, I, I don't get uh, audited or I don't get a problem with it. And notice that that kind of problem is one that you most likely will receive a letter on quickly meaning if you if you report the wrong number on a w-2 form or you report that something was not taxable on a 1099 when the 1099 said it was taxable indicated by the box that was checked off you'll most likely get a really quick response the irs saying no this is incorrect we're going to go by the documentation we have unless you're going to argue against that uh, for whatever reason and that's because the computer can basically pick that up right but if you do a more complex type of thing, say you, you charge too much charitable deduction and you didn't actually give to charity, the IRS might randomly audit you on that. They wouldn't know about it. It wouldn't be an automatic thing, but they might pick your return for whatever reason and then discover that kind of thing. So there's some kind of stuff that they have documentation on, which if you counter their documentation, W-2s, 1099s, you're going to get a response almost for sure that they're going to question it. If you do other stuff that they don't have documentation on, even if it's not supported on your end, you might not get an audit for it. But if you do get an audit, then you know you're going to be you're going to have a problem if you don't have the documentation for it. Is the general idea. Now, if the employer cannot fix it or the issuer of the 1099 cannot fix it, you still want to file your return properly in accordance with what you think is right, even though the documentation is wrong. But it's going to be a much more cumbersome process to get it fixed in that case than it would if you could just get the issuer to fix it on their end. So get ready for what's new for tax year 2022. With the end of the year approaching, time is running out to take advantage of the tax withholding estimator. This is their online tool. It's actually a pretty good tool because remember that the tax code is changing a lot. And, and so when you're trying to predict what's going to happen in the future, you can't really rely on the last year return and you can't even really rely on last year's software because the next year is going to change a lot generally. So you really need software to make a projection in terms of what your withholdings should be for the for your W-4 withholdings or what your estimated taxes should be. If you don't have access to that software or a tax preparer, even low income people are going to need some kind of projection software generally. And this is getting more and more like a projection software to help you to, to determine more accurately what your taxes will be beforehand so that you can properly create your, ten, your W-4 and or your estimated payments. So this online tool is designed to help taxpayers determine the right amount of tax to have withheld from their paycheck 
some people may have life changes uh, let, uh, like getting married or divorced, welcoming a child into taking on a second job. So whenever you have these kind of changes, you get married, you have a divorce or something, you have a, a child or you take on a second job, no matter what circumstances we are in with the tax code, even if the tax code wasn't changing, you'd still want to take into consideration what are the tax consequences because they're going to be significant. But even if you don't have those things happening these days, just because the tax law changed a whole bunch and a lot of people are going to be changing jobs and whatnot in the last couple of years, then you're probably going to more people are going to need to do an estimate, even if they had a fairly unchanging circumstances in comparison to everyone else over the last couple of years. So other taxpayers may need to consider estimated tax payments due to non-wage income from unemployment, self-employment, annuity income, or even digital assets. The last quarterly payment for 2022 is due on J January 17th, 2023. The tax withholding estimator can help wage earners determine if there is a need to adjust their withholding, consider additional tax payments, or submit a new W-4 form to their employer to avoid an unexpected tax bill when they file. So if you're under withholding now, you better you might be able to change that quickly and try to withhold a lot if, if you're way under because it's the end of the year here before the end of the year. And then you can possibly avoid penalties and interest on, on paying too little and hopefully get a bigger refund just in, in general or pay less taxes at tax time. If you're paying estimated payments, you pay quarterly and you and so you have till the end of, of January to pay the last quarter of the year. But notice if you're a W-2 employee, then the withholdings happen throughout the year stopping in December. So, so you don't have that added. You could still make an estimated payment, but you don't have that, that same withholding capacity. It stops you know, through January. It stops at December. However, if you make a withholding and you, he and you make more heavy withholdings on the plus side to the employees, if you make more heavy withholdings in December, it's more likely that the IRS will just assume that your withholdings were the same all year round and possibly not penalize you for not paying more in January as opposed to December, for example. Whereas if you make quarterly tax payments, the IRS might, is more likely to say, well, you didn't pay enough in January, you paid it all in December, and therefore we're gonna tax you for paying late, right? So if you can get the withholdings up, also note if you get the withholdings up for the last payment in, 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 uh, in the, 2022, you're going to have to adjust it again in January to get it to the right amount so that you have the right amount withheld from your paycheck for the entire year to pay your estimated taxes for next year, 2023. Okay. As taxpayers gather tax records, they should remember that most income is taxable. So uh, this includes unemployment income, refund interest, and income from the gig economy and digital assets. They're stressing those two here because they think people are being sneaky with those two. Taxpayers should report the income they earned, including from part-time work, side jobs, or the sale of goods. American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 lowered the reporting threshold for third-party networks that process payments for those uh, doing business. Prior to 2022, Form 1099-K was issued for third-party payment network transactions only if the total number of transactions exceeded 200 for the year and the aggregate amount of these transactions exceeded 20,000. Now a single transaction exceeding $600 uh, will trigger a 1099K. So notice the obviously the IRS, remember how this whole thing works. We have an income tax. The IRS doesn't trust people to report their income and therefore they're going to try to get leverage. They're going to try to get information on their side. How can they do that? They're going to go to the issuer typically of the money, the ones that paying the money. So an employer, the IRS has co-opted them, has has basically corrupted them into being a tax collector, right? The employer, do you want? They're saying, hey, do you want to have a deduction of wages? If you do, then we want you to not only tell us what they made with a W-2, so we can charge them income taxes, but actually withhold from them before they get the money. And then if you have 1099s, you have a similar situation, although they don't have the withholdings, but they're still going to pressure the payer to issue the 1099 to basically rat out, you know, the person that received the money so they could double check that the person that received it is paying the IRS their taxes. Now you've got other situations where you've got these intermediary transactions. This has to do with like gig economy and stuff. 
where it's more difficult for them to uh, to to check in on people. The classic thing where it was hard for them to check on people is, of course, like when people get paid cash from customers, hair salons, uh, it, massage parlors, bars and stuff. Th those have been notoriously difficult for the IRS to regulate because the people paying them aren't a business and they don't get a deduction. You can't you can't force someone getting a haircut to issue the person that cuts your hair a 1099. Why? Because you're not getting a deduction for the 1099, so there's no leverage on the IRS side. The new thing, of course, is the gig economy where the platforms are connecting two people together but aren't really hiring anybody. So that's becoming bigger and bigger. So we got all these, all these little businesses that have their own business but are working through a platform. The IRS wants to get in there somewhere and, and get information so they can strangle the economy to death but at least get some taxes in the meantime and so they're going to go into the intermediaries like the platforms themselves and the and the credit cards that might be issuing the payments and the and the intermediaries like the uh like the paypals and whatnot to try to get in there somewhere so they can issue the 1099 and see who's earning what at a fairly low threshold as we can see to to try to uh, get the get the information for taxes. So the lower information reporting threshold and the summary of income on form 1099k enables taxpayers to more easily track the amounts received. See, they're doing it for you. It's all for you. You understand? They're, it's not that they're trying to. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Remember, money received through third-party payments applications from friends and relatives are personal gifts or reimbursements for personal expenses. Uh, is not taxable. Those who receive 10 to 99K reflecting income they didn't earn should call the issuer. So again, you could have issues with this 1099K, like, okay, well, what if I got it and it wasn't actually income, it was something else, a gift or something, I don't know. Well, now the IRS has it, and, and if you don't report it, then the IRS is gonna have a problem. How are you gonna fix it? You gotta go to the issuer of the 1099, and that's the easiest way to fix it. Otherwise, it's gonna be more cumbersome of a problem. The IRS cannot correct it. So uh, credit amounts also change each year, like the child tax credit, the CTC, earned income tax credit, EITC, and dependent care credit. Taxpayers can use the interactive tax assistant on irs.gov to determine their eligibility for tax credits. Some taxpayers may qualify uh, this year for the expanded eligibility for the premium tax credit, while others may qualify for a clean vehicle credit through the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. Refunds may be smaller in 2023. Taxpayers will not receive an additional stimulus payment with a 2023 tax refund because there were no economic impact payments for 2022. So those were all 2000, you know, the prior years. So in addition, taxpayers who, who don't itemize uh, and take the standard deduction won't be able to deduct charitable contributions. The IRS cautions taxpayers not to rely on receiving a 2022 federal tax refund by a certain date, especially when making major purchases or paying bills. So we don't generally want to uh, depend on the money before we get the money unless we ex just really have to. Some returns may require additional review and may take longer. For example, the IRS and its partners in the tax industry continue to strengthen security reviews to protect against identity theft. So identity theft is becoming bigger and bigger as they have expanded in the last few years. Things like refundable credits, making it a more profitable thief thievery thing. So additionally, refunds for people claiming the, the earned income tax credits, EITC, or the additional child tax credit, the ACTC, can't be issued before mid-February. The law requires the IRS to hold the entire refund, not just the portion associated with EITC or the ACTC. So these ones, I, they're trying to say my interpretation being that they're going to take a little bit longer because these are the kind of credits that people are more likely to try to commit fraud in order to receive because these are the refundable credits. So they have to have another level of kind of security check on them. So these laws help ensure taxpayers receive the refund they're due by giving the IRS time to detect and prevent fraud. For taxpayers who are still waiting for confirmation that last year's tax return processed or for a tax year 2021 refund or stimulus payment to process, their patience is appreciated. As of November 11, 2022, the IRS had 3.7 million 
uh, unprocessed individual returns received this year. This include tax year 2021 returns and late filed prior year returns. Of these, 1.7 million returns require error correction or other special handling and 2 million are paper returns waiting to be reviewed and processed. They also have 900,000 unprocessed form 1040x for amended tax returns the irs is processing these amended returns in the order received and the current time frame can be more than 20 weeks taxpayers should continue to check where's my amended return there's a link to that here for the most up-to-date processing status available renew expiring tax id numbers Taxpayers should ensure their individual tax identification number, the I-10, there's a link to that here, hasn't expired before filing a 2022 tax return. Those who need to file a tax return should submit Form W-7 application for IRS individual taxpayer identification number, there's a link to that here, now to renew their I-10. Taxpayers who failed to renew an I-10 before filing a tax return next year could face a delayed refund and may, uh, inel may be ineligible for certain tax credits. Applying now will help avoid the rush as well as refund and processing delays in 2023. Bookmark the following tools on irs.gov. The IRS wants that search traffic key for the bookmark. I don't know. Online tools are easy to use and available to taxpayers 24 hours a day. They provide uh, a key information about tax accounts and a convenient way to pay taxes. IRS.gov, IRS.gov provides information in many languages and enhances services for people with disabilities, including the Accessibility uh, Helpline. Taxpayers who need accessibility assistance may call 833-690-0598. I won't say that a hundred times because there will be a link to this in the description. Taxpayers should use irs.gov as uh, their first and primary resource for accurate tax information. So let us help you page. You got the let us help you page on irs.gov has links to information and resources on a wide range of topics. You got the online account and IRS online account lets taxpayers securely access their personal information, including tax return transcripts, payment history, certain notices, prior year adjusted gross income and power of attorney information. Filers can log in to verify if their name and address is correct. So you would think that they would be utilizing your account online more and more uh, these days, given the fact that banking industries are doing that quite efficiently, even though they're handling sensitive information. So you might want to check that out. They were doing some crazy stuff with the verification, like trying to get face verification and stuff, which was seems a little bit over the top and like they're going to, I don't like that, but uh, I think they stopped that. So you might want to check it out. So they should notify IRS if their address has changed. There's a link to that here. They must notify the Social Security Administration. There's a link to that of a legal name change to avoid a delay in processing their tax return. IRS free file. Almost everyone can file electronically for free on irs.gov forward slash free file or with the IRS to go app. You could file by phone, which that's uh, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. it seems crazy. You're going to fill your tax return out by phone. That seems hard, but maybe not. Maybe it's maybe it's just me. The IRS free file program, there's a link to that here, available only through irs.gov, offers brand name tax preparation software packages at no cost. The software does all the work of finding deductions, credits, and exemptions for filers. It's free for those who qualify. Some free file packages offer free state tax return preparation. So you do want to have state tax return preparation if available for your tax software. Otherwise, you'd have to file twice or using two softwares, which is not going to be uh, something you want to do if you're in a state that has subject to state income taxes, as opposed to some other form of it tax, that is. So those who are comfortable preparing their own taxes can use free file fillable forms. Almost nobody I would recommend should do that because if your income is above the threshold, that then your income is getting fairly high. That's when you want to use the tax software possibly more, possibly look for someone to, to help you at that point, not just for tax preparation, but also for tax planning. But they have to mention it because the IRS wants to say that they have free options for everyone. 
So regardless of their income, blah, blah. Find a tax professional. The Choosing a Tax Professional page, there's a link to that here on irs.gov, has a wealth of information to help filers choose a tax professional. In addition, the Directory of Federal Tax Return Preparers with Credentials and Select Qualifications, there's a link to that here, can help taxpayers find preparers in their area who hold professional credentials recognized by the IRS or who hold an annual filing season program record of completion interactive tax assistant the interactive tax assistant there's a link to that here is a tool that provides answers to the many tax questions it can determine if a type of income is taxable and eligibility to claim certain credits or deduction it also provides answers for general questions such as determining filing requirement filing status or eligibility to claim a dependent where's my refund Taxpayers can use the Where's My Refund tool. There's a link to that here to check the status of their refund. Current year refund information is typically available online within 24 hours after the IRS receives an e-file tax return. A paper return stat status can take up to four weeks to appear after it is mailed. The Where's My Refund tool updates once every 24 hours, usually overnight, so filers only need to check once a day. So if you if you have people checking multiple times a day, they have a problem. Don't you know if they're checking it every hour? Stop. Just stop. Just relax. Doesn't help. Volunteer income tax assistance. The volunteer income tax assistant, the VITA and tax counseling for the elderly TCE programs. There's a link to that here. Offer free basic tax return preparation to qualified individuals. Get refunds fast with direct deposit. Taxpayers should prepare to file electronically and choose direct deposit. There's a link to that here for their tax refunds. It's the fastest and safest way. I'm not sure safest, but that's what they say. Fastest, certainly, uh, to file and get a refund. I'm not saying it's not safe. I just, you know, is it safer? Is it really safer? I don't know. I'm, you know, as safe as? I don't know. So even when filing a paper return, choosing a direct deposit refund can save time. For those who do not have a bank account, the FDIC website, there's a link to that here, offers information to help people open an account online. Taxpayers who can download publication 5349 tax preparation is for everyone. For more information to help them get ready to file, there's a link to that. There's a link to all this other stuff. And there's a lot of reading material, a lot of stuff to dig into here. There'll be a link to this in the description.